How do you manage a high magnesium soil? So one of the most important things you can do for your soil for the long term is look at your base saturation levels of magnesium. And what we're looking for is somewhere in the range of 12 to maybe 18% magnesium. If you've never heard this before, magnesium can tighten up a light soil. In other words, it can help you hold more moisture and calcium can loosen up a heavy soil. So we want more calcium and less magnesium in a high cation exchange capacity soil, a heavy soil. If we've got a light sandy soil, we want more magnesium out there that should tighten that soil up and help us hold a little more moisture so we can raise a better crop. First, we've got to make sure you understand why high magnesium is bad. The number one thing is magnesium is a very tiny molecule and calcium is a very big molecule, relatively speaking. So if I've got a bunch of big molecules out there, it's very easy to have more pore space. In other words, more space where air moves through, water moves through, roots move through. The problem when we have lots of those tiny little molecules, those tiny little magnesium molecules, we have tight, wet soils where we don't have good drainage, we have poor root growth, we have low oxygen levels, and that's all bad for crop production, and it also means more soil compaction. So we want to have more calcium in relation to that magnesium. Usually it's not that big a deal in the short term, other than, I'll just say this, if you have high magnesium levels, you need to apply more nitrogen to get the same bang for your buck. I, if you have your magnesium levels down, you can actually get by with less nitrogen. You'll find nitrogen is more efficient out there. So don't get us wrong. We're not saying magnesium is not important and we want to get rid of all of it. We definitely need magnesium. It is a secondary nutrient. It's important for all plants. We've got to have it, okay? But we just don't want levels over about 18 or 20 percent. Then it starts to get really bad for our soil for the short term and for the long term. The challenge with lowering magnesium is that it is that tiny little molecule and it's going to be very difficult when you don't have pore space to get it to move through. So most strategies to get magnesium lower in the soil involve adding more calcium, that big molecule. Well, yeah, but the first thing I look at is drainage. Okay, so yes, if we have more calcium, we should have better porosity in the soil. We should have more natural drainage, but I also look at tile. On our own farm where we've added drain tile and then we've added lime and or gypsum, then over time we can lower those magnesium levels down. The reason why is because when we get some more sulfur in that soil, sulfate will combine with magnesium to form magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is otherwise known as Epsom salts. Well, Epsom salts, like all salts, are pretty leachable. So as long as we have good drainage there, we have somewhere for those salts to go, we can get rid of them over time. So you may be saying, well, how much of this do I need to add and how do I figure that out? Well, you can certainly look at your soil test, looking at parts per million of things like magnesium, and then looking at your base saturation test to see where you're at in that range. So let's give you a very specific plan. If you've got magnesium above about 18 or 20 percent, our suggestion is if your calcium percent is less than 60 percent, we want you to put lime out there and use a regardless calcitic of lime. PH. Yep, regardless, regardless of, of pH. pH. Use a calcitic lime. Okay, that means mostly calcium, very, very little magnesium. All right, we want that lime out there, then we get more porosity in the soil. That's a good thing. If your calcium is above 60 percent, then a lot of times we're talking about adding gypsum to the field. Now, certainly you can use lime if your soil pH is low. If your soil pH is 6.3 or less, go ahead and use lime. Uh, but as long as that base saturation calcium is above 60 percent and your pH is fine, then just go ahead and use gypsum. Gypsum is calcium sulfate. So the big thing, Brian, is how quickly can we make this happen? Yeah, well, you can make it happen almost overnight if you want to, but it's probably not going to be economically feasible for you. So our suggestion is, hey, if you've got high magnesium levels above that 18, 20 percent range uh, and maybe even above 13, 14 percent if you've got a really heavy soil, you need to start working on this and work on it over the next 10, 15 years, something like that. And just every step along the way, just take it slow, don't spend a lot of money, but just keep working on it over time and eventually you'll find your magnesium getting down, your calcium gets up where it needs to be, and things start to work a lot better in your soil. But it, it just takes a lot of time and a little bit of investment each year for a number of years. Magnesium is certainly an important nutrient and weed control is another important thing you need to manage in your crops as well. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 